called Just to Speak. Um, our organist choir director has a little bit of a low grade temperature along with her uh, daughter, also has the same so in an abundance of caution, which I'm sure you've gotten familiar with. She is not here today, so we have recorded music. Our processional hymn is what wondrous love is this? The words are in the bulletin, and it's also on, uh, it's hymn 4039 in the blue hymnal in your pew rack. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 3. that at some point during the week, maybe even today, she's watching from home. Uh, the service continues with the salutation on the top of page four. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
Please be seated. The lesson. The Lord appears to Moses on the mountain of God in the form of a burning bush. The Lord reveals his name and he sends Moses, a fugitive, back to Egypt to lead his people to freedom. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Hordom, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, the Lord called to him out from the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed from the misery of my people who are now in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come unto me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent to me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? The God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. response. Um, let us join in reading Psalm 63, 1 through 8, found on page 5 in your bulletin. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore, I have gazed upon you in your holy place that I may have behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content of faintness and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So I am going to take a guess and say that I bet, honestly, a few of you are, if not confused by today's gospel, at least interested in sort of arguing one side or another of that gospel. What in the world is going on? Especially in light of the tragedies occurring daily in Ukraine and other tragedies. And President Zelensky himself reminded our country of our experience in Pearl Harbor at the beginning of the 40s and 9-11. The Episcopal Magazine, Living Church, mentioned an Alan Jackson song in relation to today's gospel this week. The song says, where were you when the world stopped turning on 9-11? It continues, did you shout out in anger? Did you weep for the children? Did you search for your Bible? Did you go out and buy you a gun? Did you look for heaven and look for an answer and look to yourself for what really matters? Jesus addresses two tragedies from the Holy Land headlines of his day. Galilean pilgrims in Jerusalem killed by Pilate as they offered sacrifices to God. And a collapse of a tower that ultimately killed 18 innocent bystanders. Now, Jesus emphasizes that these things are not sent by God to punish sins. God doesn't do bad things to his people. But the kicker is from Jesus Christ, he says, you'll perish just like those who died in these ways. Now, is he talking out of both sides of his mouth? And if this is all true, then, well, why repent anyway, as he mentions? One point of his, I think, is their fates should remind you that life is fragile. No one knows how long he or she has. 
The day of salvation is not later. The day of salvation is now. Don't put off doing God's will. So underlying this is that lovely word, repent from Jesus. And a big problem about that word is that so often we just don't get it. And the fig tree is the parable he offers about repentance. What is repentance? Really, it's just turning in another direction. It's looking at things in a different way, acting in a different way. In Jesus's day, the fig tree was the sweetest, most elegant, the succulent tree of the land, abundant in sweetness, and then as a result, in joy. You could hardly look at a fig tree and not smile. But today's tree in this parable, you push the leaves away and there's nothing. It's barren. It's like it's in a rut. Well, this is a wake-up call. Jesus wants sweet fruit. He even promises the tree that he'll help it produce. He wants to help, but think about it. In that parable, time is of the essence. This is about humanity as well as farming. We've got to produce and enjoy a life filled with sweet fruit. We're like the fig tree created to produce, created to enjoy a life filled with good fruit, created to be part of that fruits of the spirit tale that Paul tells us about. As we gather now during Lent, this gospel is a time and offering to examine our lives and take an honest inventory. Are we in connection with God? Are we in harmony with our sisters and brothers in Christ? Are we deep-rooted? Do we have inner peace? An abundance of joy, that's important. Or are we scattered, isolated, depressed, joyless, empty? Are we bearing fruit? Are we connected? Are we in love with humanity and with life? Are we bearing fruit? Or is it time to repent, to turn around, to think about things differently, do things differently, make different choices, maybe have dinner with the family, more often if we haven't been. Spend time with loved ones. Create new loved ones. Stop gossiping. Stop selfishly accumulating things. Look to others to give things to. Stop tearing down others. Stop causing any pain to anyone, including ourselves. The truth is that most of us know all of this. We know repentance, and we also know how to grow sweet fruit. But so often we don't choose to change. It's easier sometimes to stay in a rut, like that fig tree Jesus talks about. You know, after 9-11, I did a funeral in Los Angeles for six folks returning to Los Angeles from University of Massachusetts. And that was the plane, they were in the plane that hit the second tower. And one of them also was pregnant. So much profound sorrow. And one guy talked to me about being sad but mostly it made him scared 
it made him scared because he realized one day he was going to die. That's at least how he said it. I'm scared now because I now realize one day I'm going to die. Well, we're all going to die, and it's silly to think that we won't. Even if you're 20 years old or 25 years old, when it's most common to think that that couldn't possibly happen to me. Maybe way long time from now, but not right now. Know whose you are and always be ready. Billy Graham likes to tell this story that he was in town for a revival and he asked a kid the directions to the post office. And the kid dutifully told him and then Billy Graham invited the kid to the revival that he was giving that night and he says, I'll talk about getting to heaven. And the kid says, eh, no thanks. You don't even know the way to the post office. <laughs> so uh, often we do try to live as if we'll get to heaven. Someday, later, not now, not next year, and when next year comes around, not the year after that, and not, not until, just not ready. I had a 95-year-old grandmother at one point and said, well, Yes, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go to heaven, maybe, sort of, but no, I don't really want to go this year. <laughs> well, be ready no matter what for heaven to come to you. Be ready, and as scripture also says, be not afraid. Today we hear the gospel story about this tower falling on people. And Jesus says, repent, or that may happen to you. God isn't going to throw a tower down on you if you don't change. But he's saying, now is your chance to change, because you never know. Wouldn't it be a shame if you hadn't changed some of your ways? If I hadn't changed some of my ways, Someday a tower may come down. We may find ourselves, God forbid, under a fallen tower at 9-11, in the Ukraine situation, at Pearl Harbor. But tower or no 9-11 or Ukraine or Pearl Harbor or no, our limited time will eventually come to an end. And when that happens, and when we see the face of God in heaven, we want to be able to say, life was good, life was sweet, and I was a big part of that sweetness. The fruit is sweet, the feast abundant, and Lent is the season in which God gives us especially a chance to focus on that. Let's make good use of this holy time. Repent, because it is a good thing. Amen. And let us stand and say together the Nicene Creed. It's in our Red Book of Common Prayer on the inside cover. This is the ecumenical version. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. In this holy season, let us turn to God in prayer, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the catechumens and for all the holy people of God, that we may heed the God who calls us to repentance in the events of our lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this nation and all the nations of the world, that we may live in harmony and peace. Let us, Lord, hear, hear our prayer. For the enslaved in body or in spirit, that God may come to rescue them and grant them freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community, that during this holy season, God's grace may produce in us the fruit God seeks. Let us pray to the Lord. For our own needs and those of others, that God will not allow us to be tested beyond our strength, let us pray to the Lord. We give thanks and pray for those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially according to our parish cycle of prayer, Barbara Green, Betsy Grimmer, Jeff and Rhonda Griswold, and their Ohana. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Dan, Hank, Betty Jo, Brad, Marsha, Lucy, Alan, Susie, Kadeem, Addie, Michael, Corey, Adrienne, Morgan, Jamie, Natalia, Amelie, Jasmine, and those we name now either silently or aloud. We pray for the nation and all in authority. Protect all men and women who serve our nation in faraway places. We pray for people of Ukraine, for all who support Ukraine, and for the hope of peace. We pray for all those who have died, including Joan Pratt, Jim Dahl, that they may find eternal life in your loving presence. God, ever faithful and true, from old you have revealed yourself as one who will be with your people to save them. Be with us in our times of need, now and always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. 
Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Please have a seat. I also want to let you know, you might have been wondering, how can you say that the organist choir director isn't here today? First of all, she is here in playing the already recorded music that she played uh, yesterday from her home and recorded it there, um, and despite not feeling that great. But we had a live prelude um, Megan Mueller, who has grown up in our church, is one of uh, Ina's organ students. I think Ina has at least three kids who are students and three of us adults who are her students. And Megan's probably the best, I think she is. So she agreed to play the prelude and will also play the pro, uh, post, pro, uh, postlude today. Thank you, thank you, Megan. She also was your reader, uh, one of your readers. Um, the announcements are on the buff col colored page inside your bulletin. And the Lenten series continues tonight, that difficult subject, what is obedience, is the topic. We're doing the rule of Benedict. There'll, uh, there'll be handouts there, no, preparation, advanced preparation is necessary. So if you'd like to join us, it's 5 to 6.30. We end in a silent soup supper. Um, there is a way there to give your time and treasure for Ukraine. Uh, you can give through the diocese. You, the, you can give, I think, maybe the best way through EpiscopalRelief.org. Episcopal Relief and Development, 100% of your gifts will go if you mark it to go to Ukraine, it will go to Ukraine. But regardless, 100% goes to outreach and aid for others. Uh, time and talent cards, many of us filled those out last week, the week before. They are still on, there are still some on the table in the back. We didn't put them in your bulletin this week, but this is to talk, uh, for you, for yourself, we don't collect them. But this is, you're thinking about how much you will pray during the week for church and yourself, your family, the world, and also the kind of um, talent that you have as well that you could offer to the church and beyond uh, that as well. Let's see here. The youth group meets next Saturday. They'll continue with the banana bread ministry and plan spring and summer opportunities. There'll also be a car wash going on all day out here. If you're meeting with the, if the youth group is meeting, just go right straight through back to the parish hall. The car wash will be right up here, and this goes to support gifted and physically disabled scouts. We have a work day also on Saturday, April 2nd, 9 to noon. This helps us get our sacred space ready for Easter. And it's always a good way to get to know people. This staycation, uh, how to register for this. Everybody that's tried to register for this can tell you, forget it. Don't do this. It's not don't come to staycation. Definitely come to staycation at Camp Mokalaia. But we all had so much trouble with it this week. I mean, even people under 40, under 30, that we're just, we talked, Tom, my husband, called a camp director. He says, you've got to give us an easier way to register. And so we will have a different way to register, and we'll let you know that during the week. <clears throat> For summer camp offerings, pick up some of the literature that's on the table by the organ. 
And there are also some family staycations that you could do at Camp Mokalea, but there are also age-specific things for the kids. Easter flowers, I believe you have an envelope in your bulletin where you can give flowers, donate money, donate fl for flowers for uh, in memory or in honor of someone or just in honor uh, to the glory of Easter. Uh, we will have that in our bulletin on Easter Sunday. And Easter is a perfect time. Easter lasts seven weeks, by the way. Perfect time for baptisms and confirmations. We'll baptize anytime, so if anybody is interested in a baptism for themselves or their kids, uh, let us know and we will arrange to meet with you and to have those baptisms. Confirmations, the bishop is confirming um, on the island of Oahu at the cathedral on Saturday night, the night of the Easter vigil at 7 p.m. And talk to me if you want to do that. It's a really wonderful thing. If you've been baptized, or even if you haven't been baptized, uh, and you want to be confirmed in the Episcopal Church, let me know, and we'll arrange to um, prepare for that, and then to take you, um, me or meet you down there, at the cathedral for that lovely, lovely service. Our vigil is also a beautiful service. We start in darkness, we move on to the ringing of bells and the singing of uh, Easter hymns, and it's just really great. You have the schedule of the bell choir and chimes, uh, different ages, and you have the Holy Week schedule, the churchyard cell. I think we're talking about a date, but I'm not sure the date's been set. So just remember that we have a nice way that we do that. And um, so keep that in the back of your mind that it is coming. And on the back are um, ways to live a life transformed, the way of love in Lent, different suggestions for each day. I'm going back to the most important one, Lent madness. You know March madness. I don't know how your brackets are going with that. But Lent Madness, I filled out my brackets. It's the same kind of thing. Each year they choose 32 saints and they vie against each other. And then you get it down to the saintly 16 and then the elate eight and the faithful four. And then you get down to two and then one wins the golden halo. Queen Emma is in it this year. Tomorrow is the first day she's up against somebody. She's up against Hugh of Lincoln. I just do think that we can beat Hugh of Lincoln and anybody else in her path on the way to winning the Golden Halo. So go to lentmadness.org, stop laughing, Preston, and vote for Queen Emma. You just go straight there, and if you're going there on Monday, immediately it has the who is up, Emma and Hugh, and then you read down, scroll down, maybe uh, click for more, and then there's a place for you to, to vote. So do vote, and vote. You can vote often if you've got many different email addresses, but you can't vote on more than one, on an email address more than once, or we lose votes. We know, we know that from experience. <laughs> Not this year. <laughs> but she still, she still, Emma went all the way to the finals and only lost to um, Mary Magdalene. So this year, I just think she's gonna go all the way. I think that's what's gonna happen. So, take it away. Birthdays and anniversaries. Birthdays and anniversaries, and Javon heard this at 7.15. Don't let Queen Emma be Kentucky this year. Let her be Gonzaga. I don't Vote even understand tomorrow. what that means, and I even follow March Madness. She's just going to be, like any good basketball team, she's only worried about the very next one. That's the right. Competition is That's two right. of Lincoln. There you go. If anybody needs any help knowing how to vote, come see one of the two of us. <laughs> Birthdays and anniversaries. Paula? I'm Paula Sterling. My daughter Caroline celebrated her birthday on the 16th last week. And this is for my brother who will turn 79 at the end of this week. And I thought by now a tower surely would have fallen upon him. 
Our birthdays in our parish this week are on the 24th, Charles Mueller and Matt Woody. On the 25th is Bill Carpenter. Bill, hold your hand up back there. Bill's birthday is on the 25th, and on the 26th, Janie Andrews. Does anybody else besides Paula or and me have somebody whose birthday they'd like to recognize or anniversary or a Thanksgiving in your life you would like to recognize? Okay. Please join me in the prayer that's in, the, in your service bulletin. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And happy birthday and congratulations in Hawaiian. How ole la hanau, aho o mai kai. Our offering bowls are up at the front and at the back. When you come up to receive communion, we use intincted wafers. Please come up the outside aisle and return to your pew along the center aisle. If you would like a, wa a plain wafer or simply a blessing, just let us know as you come up. Let us with joy and gladness present to the Lord the gifts of our life and labor. And this morning, with Ina's absence, we will speak, say together, the holy, holy, holy. And then if you look a few pages further back, we will skip the Agnus Dei and just proceed straight from there. Please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and, and of thine own have, have we given thee. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, you reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you. 
joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we, we celebrate, celebrate his, his death and resurrection, resurrection as we, we await, await the day of his coming. coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God given for you, the people of God. We take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
please stand and join me in our post-communion prayer in the middle of page 11. A pulley kako, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the fruit of your fig trees let you see God in everyone and everything you encounter. And may the fruit of your fig trees enable you to feel the power of the Holy Spirit in, around, and through you. And may the fruit of your fig trees let you trust that through Jesus Christ you will have eternal life with God. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon and within you now and forever. Amen. Eho o mai ka, eho o mai ka i kākou i ka haku.